I wanted to talk about the roots of Scientology, and I mentioned at the end of season one that in the second season we're going to be going deeper into its roots. So a way to do that is to start off in the mid-40s with something called Operation Paperclip, which I'm going to step you through. We're going to go up to Charles Manson, which is a very interesting time in history, and talk about him. And then we're going to go up to the 70s, uh, dealing with David Berkowitz, or the son of Sam Killer. And all throughout this journey, the Scientology cult plays its role, and we'll talk about that. So grab your bong. I'm going to grab a cigarette. Drop some acid, whatever you feel like doing, because my friends, we're going back to the hippie era. And what role did Scientology have to play in all this? Wasn't I going towards spiritual freedom? And how is it that I came to be an unwitting Manchurian candidate at Scientology's Celebrity Center without my knowledge or consent? Oh, I'm so looking forward to this. I was just saying to you, um, there are so many connections in this that is just going to make so much sense to people as we go through the story. So this is this is really fascinating and really, really important to understand what's happening today. Isn't it? Like, I know when I first asked you, you had not heard of the Son of Sand, had you, Catherine? Not I at all. So it's all been completely new to me. But actually watching and going through the information that you send and going through the documentary, it's incredible how relevant it is to what we've all been through over the last three well, years. This might oh. be controversial to say, but I was telling you, Catherine, I actually have a lot of empathy for David Berkowitz. Yeah, um, I, I really do. I think he was a mentor and candidate. I think that he was his mind was scrambled. I think that he was a lost person. We've all, oh, but by the grace of God, go I. We've all been in places in our... When you look at, we've spoken a lot about the characteristics of psychopaths and the difference between being a psychopath and mind controlled. And when you see some of the threats that were made to him, um, David Berkovic, if he then divulged some of the other people involved, which involved harming his family members... Yes, you know, that's not a psychopath. A psychopath. There's a consistent theme here as we start to see the main players in here of severe childhood trauma. Severe, severe. Yeah. So when they first, and that's interesting that they, so there are people out there that be like, oh, Mari Terry was just a crazy conspiracy theorist. What's conspiracy theorist and crazy about that letter? If you're not going to read that letter and think satanic cult, then yeah. I don't know what planet you're living on. They're basically talking. So here we go. What Son of Sam leaves out about the process and its Scientology connection. Now that's in reference to the Process Church of the Final Judgment, which as you'll learn about is an offshoot of Scientology. The Sons of Sam introduces viewers to the Process Church of the Final Judgment, and here's what the Netflix documentary leaves out about the, mo about the movement, supposedly. You guys might recognize that from the thumbnail. The Sons of Sam, a descent into darkness, introduces viewers to the process church of the final judgment, but a lot gets left out about the movements and its roots in Scientology. Netflix docuseries is largely told from the perspective of journalist Maury Terry, who dedicated his life to the Son of Sam case, hoping to prove that David Berkowitz didn't act alone. Terry's research into the alleged cult members John and Michael Carr, who, Ber who Berkowitz claimed were co-conspirators to his crimes, revealed the past link to the Scientology Church and an offshoot branch known as the Process Church. Now, before we get deeper into this, Michael Carr was a high-level Scientologist. He's the one that supposedly uh, introduced David Berkowitz to the Son of Sam cult, which is an offshoot of the Process, which is an offshoot of Scientology. He got a suppressive declare from Hubbard, got booted out, and um, joined, like I said, allegedly, an offshoot of the Process Church. I hope that makes sense so far. So, um, Terry believed that the New York branch of the Process Church spawned a satanic cult called the Children. And as you'll see, that might be more along the lines of an offshoot called the Four Ps of the Process or the Chingon. And Netflix true crime documentary examines Maury Terry's, th Maury Terry's theory that several members of the cult were behind the 1970s killing spree attributed to the son of Sam. Computer. But you could tell he was very nervous because you're right, Catherine, we're dealing with a huge satanic cult. I believe that, you know, like this, th I can't, I still, it's, it's, it's in the docuseries. Somebody said, you have to be an idiot 
to a complete the... idiot to not oh, see this and you know that uh, there's always these cases which whether it's some sort of divine intervention or what but it it's so deep and it to the ties go so high in this they go you know there's ties to hollywood there's ties to the military there's huge ties to scientology there's ties to um massive ties to london there's ties to other religions and other cults um there's very suspicious goings on with mayors and police departments and why um and and other people when they cover up evidence that they were told to bury it no you know there was that other guy that bought some new evidence to it and he was told just to file it i yeah. think i just want to really pull out how significant this is because the thing is we we make whether you're talking about the spiritual aspect the quantum physics um the conspiracy we always talk about everything's connected and when you really delve into this case you really see everything is connected you see the same playbooks come up time and time and time again the same sort of organizations and agencies and hollywood and also a huge amount of consistency over the information that does come out over satanic cults it's a bit like anyone who's involved in things that the whole purpose of it goes once it's out in the open oh absolutely it's absolutely. so important it's it it's fascinating and i could literally go through this so we could literally do a year of shows on how much there is just in this one story alone it's so deep. so much and that's why i had to like keep because i have two notebooks open because like there's just so much there's so, so many much I'm gonna well, go I don't ahead. know if anybody from prison gets to watch these channels, but I would love to speak to David Berkowitz if he would speak to me. Catherine, I would have you in on it, too. I don't know if that's even possible, um, but I'm going to put that out there because I would love to speak with him and, and have him tell his side of the story as much as he will, you know, for his own safety, because I think that this is just, you know, and it also teaches us a lesson. Don't judge a book by its cover. You don't mm. know the story. I have a lot of empathy for him and what happened in the tragedy of his life and i think that he he did change his name from the son of sam to the son of hope because he's really i think he's doing a lot to try to correct that karma of course correct apparently in this present he's trying to help other people and so um that to me is a sold person who got mind scrambled and now is trying to work his way out of that and correct that karma and 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 really do the right thing out. so but because it's also going to help out our friend doug who was really really the person i would have never known about this or even considered this if it wasn't for doug and so and i would love if it wasn't for you and it's such an important bit of the jigsaw puzzle so please